Good afternoon, everybody. Let me be very honest. I'm here to persuade you that our differences in the world should be seen as a strange, a source to inspiration and development, not intolerance or prejudice. So today, I want to encourage each and one of us to do our very best to stay curious, to be open-minded, so we can all enjoy a better and more diversified world. So, how do we become more open-minded, you might ask? And I believe that travel is a great weapon to fight narrow-mindedness. Travel broadens our mind. When we meet new people, experience new people, new places, something different, we also start to think differently. And that is why my team and I, for a decade, have worked really hard to make travel simple, but also to inspire people to travel more. Because we believe that traveling really opens up our mind. And our latest global travel study, a study among more than 7,200 people in 18 countries, shows that 76% actually say that traveling has given them a more positive view on other cultures in general. 75% say that traveling has given them a more positive view on people um, from countries they have actually visited. And 61% believe that there would be less intolerance in the world if we traveled more. See, that is something I really like to hear. But there is a challenge. And the challenge is that 48% also believes that people have become less tolerant towards other cultures than we were five years ago. And this is something we have to fight. It's almost half of the people we ask who said this. So it's about time we start a conversation about who we really are and how we can all become more tolerant and have less prejudice. And I can start that conversation, but that doesn't really matter if I'm the only one having that conversation. So that's why we want to start a movement, a movement where hopefully all of you People who can support and believe in our purpose about opening up the world can help us spread the word. That is at least what we hope for. And when I heard somebody suggesting using a DNA test as a tool, I thought that was the perfect way to actually confront people with their own narrow-mindedness. And at the same time, showing that we actually have more things in common than we think. What we did was we invited, or we casted, you could say, 67 people. We aimed for a very diverse crowd. We interviewed the 67 people for 10 minutes each, asked them questions about uh, where you're from, what do you think about your country, what do you particularly like about your country, are there any nationalities you would like to be, uh, are there any nationalities you don't like to be, and so on. And afterwards, we tested all the 67 people. We waited for the results, and when we got the results, we matched the results with the interviews we had. We then selected 15 people from where we thought we could maybe get some strong reactions. Then we got a call from the DNA company telling us that something really rare came up, because among the 67 people we tested, it turned out that two of them were actually cousins, distant cousins. So we thought, Maybe if we're lucky, we can have a good story about that. So we actually ended up having 16 people in Copenhagen for the shooting of the DNA journey. Three days of shooting with three cameras. And of course, we really hoped to capture some strong moment, especially focusing on the second where the participants got the results. But let's just see the movie. I'm proud to be English. My family have served and we've defended this country and have been to war for this country. I'm, I'm really patriotic about Bangladesh. Well, I am 100% I am Icelandic, yeah, definitely. This is a Kurdish wedding with my mom in the traditional Kurdish clothes. Da, 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 da. We're just proud black, so that's it. Yeah, I think we are probably the best country in the world, if I'm honest. Think about other countries and other nationalities in the world. What, are there any that you, you don't feel you you get on with well or you, you won't like particularly? Germany, yeah. 
I'm not a fan of the Germans. You might think they're a little bit... Particularly India and Pakistan, probably, because of the whole, you know, the conflict. Because I have this side of me that's like, that hates Turkish people. Not, not people, but the government. But French? No. <laughs> We're just best, you know, it's just fact. I'm more important than you. I don't know you, but <laughs> in my opinion, I am strong and I am, I am more important than a lot of people. How would you feel about taking a journey based on your DNA. Um, yeah, I feel very uh, intrigued. What could you possibly tell me that I don't know? So do you know how DNA works? So you get half from mum and half from dad, so 50% from each of them, and they get 50% from their parents, and back and back and back. And all those little bits of your ancestor they filter down to make you, you. I need you to spit in this tube for me. And you spit up to the little black line. That's a lot of spit. <laughs> right, the story of you is in that tube. What's it gonna tell me? It's gonna be, oh yeah, you're French, and yeah. wait, your grandparents are French, and wait. 100% Bengali. Solid Iraqi. I'm Cuban. <laughs> you gonna tell me that I'm English? Not I've told you. Jay, can you come down and join us? I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say. So you ready to find out your results? Will you read it out to us, please? Wow, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Shit. I didn't expect that. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Caucasus? Which was uh, Turkish? Yeah. <laughs> Eastern Europe, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece. I'm 32% British? Yeah. <laughs> what? Great Britain, 30%. Can we... 5% German? I'm Irish. Yeah, so I'm a Muslim Jew. Great Britain, 11%. Are you sure these results are mine? Eastern Europe? <laughs> Iceland has definitely moved closer to Europe now. I'm gonna go a bit far right now, but this should be compulsory. There would be no such thing as like extremism in the world if people knew their heritage like that. Like, who would be stupid enough to think of such thing as like a pure race? In a way, we're all kind of cousins, in a broad sense. Mm. In a much more direct sense, you have a cousin in this room. Mm -mm. Turn around and guess who it is. Wash? Yeah. What's that? Why don't you come down here and oh meet your cousin? God. This is the best. <laughs> I, I did no idea. This is like I, my heart's pounding right now. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm Jay from everywhere, but I'm to this. <laughs> I'm a real man of the world. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, would you like to travel to all of these places? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> So the DNA journey is very much about taking a journey, exploring your own diversity. But it's also about a journey where you can actually travel to the places you're from. And maybe you don't know where you're from, but then I know that you, at least one of you, are able to win a DNA kit. I heard that earlier today, so that's really exciting. I have to say that the DNA journey has been an incredible experience for me personally as well. 
I was there behind the scene during the entire shooting, and it was just so emotional. From very first second, you could just feel the emotion. Just sitting there and listening to people's stories, hearing their backgrounds, seeing them showing the family pictures, and of course, always the highlight when the envelope was passed through and people had to open it. It was just incredible. Really, really amazing experience. And I think it's pretty obvious that if you find something that turns out to be part of yourself, you do start to think and feel differently. But what really struck me was that even the participants who actually got a result that was very close to what they predicted also seemed to react quite heavily. And I think it probably has to do with suddenly you sit there with an envelope in your hand and you know biology is telling you who you are. Then you start thinking about how have you been acting? Have you been patriotic without really knowing who you are? Does it then make sense to be patriotic when you don't know who you are? But the important thing is that a DNA test doesn't change you. You are who you are, but it might change your mindset. And I think that's the important thing for us, and that was what we tried to achieve, that we can actually change people's mind. After the shooting, I know this is a terrible picture of me, but it was the only one I had on my phone, and I wanted to share it with you, because after the shooting, all the participants and all of us who had been involved, we hang out, and we talked, we laughed, we hugged, we had fun, we acted like we were one big family. And in a way, we are. But remember, none of us knew each other. None of us had met before. But just because we had listened to each other's stories, suddenly we started to act like we were best friends. And going back to the company and telling my employees that I personally experienced how we changed people's mind, how the fight and the purpose we've had for 10 years actually resonate deeply with other people is just the best feeling I ever had. Much better than reaching a revenue goal or reaching a profit goal or something like that. So that was really remarkable. That was my experience. This is what some of the participants said. It was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. I'm so grateful to have lived that experience, grateful for the way it changed me and how it's shaping my work as an artist today. It was a profoundly emotional experience and made me question who I am and who I thought I was. And this is what Carlos, the Cuban guy, he Being said. Being part of the DNA journey is uh, truly amazing because all of a sudden you're a part of something that is changing the world in a good way. Um, I never expected to be or to, yes, to be from so many or to have uh, my ancestors from so many parts in the world. And, uh, and exactly because of that, I want to travel. I want to discover Africa. I want to discover their music. I want to discover my ancestors. So that was Carlos. And the funny thing about Carlos is that I actually met him two weeks ago. I was uh, cycling home from work, look across the street, and I think it could be Carlos, but I'm not sure. He starts to wave. I get so excited. I wave back. And before I even know it, I start to send him a finger kiss across the street. I met the guy twice, maybe talked to him for 10 minutes, and now I'm sending finger kisses across the street. Isn't that crazy? But it's because we have shared a great experience together, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Of course, we also had to make a DNA test among all the employees. And we are a company who celebrates diversity. So I think some of the employees were actually a bit disappointed when they saw the results, because now we all aim to have a very diverse profile. We actually had one who has a 100% from just one region, which is really, really rare, and also one with 99 and 98, but in general, most of us actually have a DNA where we come from maybe four or five regions, I think. So all in all, a very diverse crowd, and I think that's also reflected in our DNA. My own profile looks like this. I'm 70% from Scandinavia, 22% from Great Britain. So some would say a pretty strong Viking profile. Sometimes it's good to be a Viking, sometimes it's not. I look at it as positively. 
I have 2% from West Europe, which is Germany. I knew that from the stories I heard about ancestors. Then I have 5% from Italy, Greece. I have no idea where that comes from, but I'm proud of it. And then I actually have 1% from South Asia. Can't you tell? <laughs> it's just great. And I love it because it's part of me, and I'm proud to have part of Asia in it as well. But the reflection in general about having uh, had this DNA journey for me is very much about nationalities. I think in general, we speak way too much about nationalities. For me, it's really not the nationalities. And I say that even though we have 36 nationalities in my company, I'm usually proud of it, but it is not the nationalities that makes a difference. It is in our differences we seek the inspiration. So let's not Let's not pay too much attention to our biological path, but instead, let's remember that there are more things uniting us than dividing us. And the DNA journey was the first step in an attempt of creating a movement, and it has been a really, really good attempt, I think. We have seen that within four months, or actually less than four months, we have more than 175 million views of the DNA journey. That is great, but we need to move on. So let's all of us challenge ourselves to do what we can do to open up the world. And just to recap, it's very, very human to have prejudice. We actually all have some just more than others. So let's lowering our guards Let's talk to strangers. Let's say yes to new experiences. And remember that travel broadens our mind. But even though you don't want to travel or you don't plan to travel, we can still, each and every one of us, do things daily. We can do things to actually open up the world. So I really want to encourage you to do that. And I also want to encourage you to really stay curious. But before I leave the stage, I also want you to stand up. This is now the third time you have to stand up today, isn't it? But it works. Because this is an exercise we always do in my company. And we, we use it when we need inspiration or if we need to raise the energy level. So basically, I'm just gonna ask you to follow me. So you do like this. And we're gonna bend the arm and the leg at the same time. And it has to be really, really powerful like this, otherwise it won't work. And there is nothing about, no halfway, you have to go all in, otherwise it doesn't work. And it's when you combine a physical activity with your voice, the energy level comes. So I'm gonna ask you a question, and there's only one answer, and that is yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you three times, and when we've done it three times, you turn around and you give a high five to whoever's next to you and you will see how the energy level has uh, increased in this room. And remember, go all in, and you have to yell. <laughs> Show courage. Will you help me open up the world? Yes! yes! Are you sure? Yes. yes! Are you absolutely sure? Yes! yes! Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, high five.